This video goes through a, an example of calculating transition matrices. We're going to work with a set of symmetric matrices, 2 by 2 symmetric matrices. We've already seen that this is a subspace of the 2 by 2 matrices. And to get any sort of coordinates at all, we need ordered bases. So here are two different ordered bases for this vector space V. The first one, S, looks kind of like what you would expect it would, and the second one, T, is a little bit more exotic. But they're both bases, and as we know, ordered bases means the order matters. So we're going to consider the vector 4 pi pi square root of 5 in V. Um, I said vector because we're working in a vector space, but of course we recognize that this is a 2 by 2 matrix. With respect to the ordered basis S, we can find coordinates for this 2 by 2 matrix. So we do this, we uh, see that it's 4 times the first one, plus pi times the second one, plus square root of 5 times the third one. Oops, I noticed that I have a typo here in the first matrix. This should be a 0. Okay, so let's pretend that that was a 0 the whole time. Sorry about that. As you know, I like to make lots of arithmetic errors. Okay, so we've got the linear combination of our matrix for pi pi square root of 5 in terms of the ordered basis S, where I've written the basis, the basis elements in order. And I look at the coefficients in this linear combination, and those become my coordinate vector. So when I give this matrix coordinates with respect to S, I get a 3 by 1 vector, and it's 4 pi square root of 5 in R3. If I want to calculate coordinates with respect to the ordered basis T, I could either do it directly or I could construct a transition matrix um, from the matrix from the S basis to the T basis. So I need to find the coordinates of S1, S2, and S3 with respect to the ordered basis T. I'm just calling my um, ordered basis S elements, S1, S2, and S3, and they're those in order. So I can set up a matrix equation here and solve for the coefficients. And so I found that the coordinates for S1 are 0, 1 half, 0. And I can do this for the other ones as well. So I'll get coordinates for the second ordered basis element of S with respect to T and the third S, element, S basis element with respect to T. All right, so there's... There are three vectors. Um, I suggest that you take a look at our textbook because it goes through a slightly quicker way of doing this using row reduction. We'll also see an example of this in class. But for now, what I know is that my transition matrix from S to T looks like this three by three matrix. Okay, so now if I wanna find the coordinates of my two by two matrix for pi, pi square root of 5 with respect to t, I multiply the transition matrix p t from s by the coordinates of my matrix with respect to the ordered basis s. And so I find that the, um, the coordinates with respect to t are pi 2 minus pi negative square root of 5. So it's still a vector in R3, but it has different entries. Now let's look at the vector well, let's look at the inverse of the transition matrix that we calculated. So we know that we can calculate this by row reducing the um, augmented matrix that looks like this. And when we do that, we find the inverse of the transition matrix, and it looks like that. Now check this out. If we actually were to calculate the transition matrix from s to t, or t to s, the other one, the one we haven't done yet, um, we'll find that it's actually the inverse of the matrix that we've calculated already. So that's one way to get the transition matrix going the other way. All right, so here are the vectors that would go into that matrix, and p s from t ends up looking like the inverse of p t from s. And that's pretty cool. 
So your food for thought is what is the, what matrix do we get when we look at P, S from S? I bet you can figure that out without too much thought.